recording video okay once you will start believing our recording video you will be like uh, you will start lacking in our class okay so try to join live session do learning together then only it will give you more advantage otherwise if you will start following the recording you will be like uh, you will be far behind with uh, our regular classes Yeah, so today we will continue with the uh, first, uh, we will continue with the Atlantian product. This is Jira and Confluence. So Jira ticketing tool we already covered. Anyone has any doubt on this Jira ticketing tool? Like uh, most of the project we are, we are following this agile methodology and nowadays like that will be go very common. Okay. So agile methodology will be very common in each project. Very rarely now projects are following this waterfall model. Or even if they are following waterfall model, then they are following the hybrid waterfall plus Jita. Sorry, waterfall plus uh, agile. Okay, no one is following pure waterfall model. Okay. So most of the places uh, company are following now this agile methodology. And to manage those projects, they need some kind of uh, ticketing tool. So Jira is very uh, widely used. A part of that in Azure also, Azure uh, now Azure is providing one complete package. OK, so they are providing repository. They are providing ticketing tool. They are providing this CICD pipeline. Everything is there. Azure uh, like uh, package okay so that is also very similar okay if you go for azure ticketing tool that is also very similar to jira ticketing tool there also we will have similar kind of features and facility like a story point then uh, like start date end date your comments reviewer assignee everything will be same how we did in jira ticketing tool so I have seen few projects now they they like uh, start using this Azure ticketing tool, but uh, still Jira service now and one IBM product is also there that is also widely used. Now coming to second part of this uh, Atlantian product that is Confluence. Okay, this is a center repository. Okay, where we maintain our documents and all. Let's say in our organization. We have uh, like a group of people. They are working in same team and they want to have. Access of similar kind of document. Let's say we have functional design document. We have technical design document. Then we have some coding standards. Then we have deployment guide. OK, many things are there which should be shared across the team. OK, so in that case, if they will uh, like uh, put the document in their local, then every time if someone need, then we have to share with them. OK, so to avoid that kind of problem, so we can use a central repository where we can maintain all the document and everything. A part of Confluence, there are many other ways where you will get central repository which can be accessed by every team member okay but confluence it's like uh, this one is very mature one here you will get lots of feature okay at the same time multiple team member can change the document okay and 
like uh, and you will get all the tracking also who did change what change he did okay all those kind of tracking we have in confluence so let me show you how confluence looks like So here you can see like uh, in your team, let's say we have multiple team members. So at the time of setup also, it's asking to provide email address of your team member. So I need three email ID. So I will like uh, I will able to show you how it give lots of advantage. So in chat, just I uh, need three email ID. So I will give you access for this confluence. Three members send your email ID. I will give you access of this confluence. What I'm going to do setup. Okay. Once I will uh, do next, so you will get email notification. So you need to open that email and you need to register your account. To check your email you should receive one email and you need to uh, create your account on this uh, atlantian product okay let me know once you are ready okay so now we are in the confluence page okay so here i will show you like how we can can create a folder files and all well uh, let them create the account okay So you can see like uh, just now I create like I clicked on this create and it redirect me to one page. OK, this uh, page. Just. So first in left hand side you can see we have option page. OK, so here either you can create document or you can create folder. OK, so at this moment first I I just want to create the folder. And folder name I will give. So you can see here. In this particular place I haven't given any details so it will come as a folder. OK, now. I will create one more folder. So in this particular folder, I will maintain all the functional design document. And in this particular folder, based on the environment, let's say we have five environment. Dev, SIT, UAT, pre-prod, prod. So we have five environment. So I, I want to maintain the detail of each environment in different, different folder. OK, 
Okay, so for that purpose, I created this folder and this I created where I will maintain all the functional design document. Okay, now let me go to this particular one. Okay, here I want to create first functional design document. So what I will do, I will give name as a So this is a functional design document for record payment for this particular functionality. Now here I will provide all the detail for this particular. Okay, so I have in other folder. So what I will do, I will just copy paste this. our functional design document looks like in this way. So instead of maintaining in local, I pasted everything in this place. Publish this. So you can see in this particular folder functional design document, now we have one document okay, that is for record payment functional design document. And here you will get everything. OK, so what is the like program name, project name, then line of business, then document instruction is there. Then what all this document will contain like overview and functional and application specification. OK, then this, these are the authors, OK? So like developer guide started the initial, like he created initial draft, then someone with name XYZ, he did initial review. OK, so once someone will do review of your document, OK, he will put uh, some review comment and then you need to incorporate that review comment. So in this way, you need to keep updating and you need to keep changing the version. Also, you need to provide the date and description. OK, so this will help us to monitor who did change, what change he did and when he did. OK. Then slowly like uh, you can see we have other detail and then we have business overview, business benefit. And then API detail, what all API are involved there and slowly if you will go down, you will able to see. Description of those API. OK, so. API detail like resource name, their method name, objective of that API, then input structure. These are the input structure. So generally functional design document contain all this detail. So developer can go through this document and can uh, do the required implementation. We will discuss on functional design document in detail. At this moment, we are learning confluence and I am showing how and what kind of document we maintain here. For our project, we will create functional design document together in our next session, like in uh, next Saturday. So first we will create the functional design document. We will do requirement gathering and then we will go for RAML part. OK, so this document we will create uh, next Saturday. Today I am showing how to use this Confluence. So you can see here in Confluence, whatever functional design document we have, we will keep inside this folder and whatever environment de detail we have, we will keep inside this folder. Now you will say what advantage we have for this. OK, so other people like other three people already joined this Confluence page. Can anyone confirm me like are you able to see this particular page or not? Pawan, Ravi and Rajesh, are you there?
Okay, uh, Rajesh, you need. Okay, uh, you all like all three need to unmute yourself for five minutes. Can you unmute yourself for one yeah, Ravi yeah. and Rajesh? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so what you need to do, you need to go on same page. Can you go on same page? Are you able to see my organization? What I have created? Okay, maybe one person can share your screen. I, I can guide you. Uh, Ravi, I'm, uh, is my screen is visible? Yes, I can see. OK, so you can see all the notifications are there. On left hand side, you can open this uh, record payment. Yeah, same document. Same page, right? Yes, correct. So you can see here, like he also have the access what I created. OK, so whatever document like uh, I, I am creating, so he as a team member, he can also see that document. OK, and we have other advantage here. So at the same time, he can also update this document and I can also update this document. OK, so maybe uh, you can create on this project Alpha Bank. Click on that. You also go to same place. Then you will able to see. I'm also on same place or. Can you scroll up a bit? Yeah, there is one edit option on uh, top. Yeah, click on that. Okay, scroll down. So now wait. Yeah. So you can see here in on top of the screen, you can see two like a, a small circle are there. One with his name another one with my name. Okay. So we both can like we both are working here. So like here we will get okay. Two people are working on this. Okay. Now you select this alpha bank. Okay. And I selected this comment CTV. So see like uh, in his screen, he is getting notification. I selected customer CTV means I am doing some change on this. And he selected Alpha Bank, so I am getting notification. Okay, this particular thing, this uh, like another person is working. Okay, now you can stop sharing your screen. So, you can see like he selected this alpha bank so i am getting this notification someone working on this particular part okay so we all can work together and we can track each other who is doing what okay so this kind of advantage we have and we will have one summary also history should be somewhere So here you can see we have all the summary here. Like what all change are there, what all this line was added, this line was removed, formatting was changed. So all those things you will able to see here. At the same time, if you want to share this document to someone else, okay, that also you can do. So somewhere we have option to. OK, 
one option we have to export okay in future let's say you want to send the, this document through email you don't want to give access to that particular person okay let's say you want to share this functional design document with some other team member but you don't want to give access of this conference page or this particular doc in that case you can export this document in word or pdf format and you can share with them at the same time we have option to share also invite is fine we can invite other people okay share option here so you can uh, enter the email id okay and uh, you can share with them okay so multiple options are here you can add comment okay you can like highlight some points so in this way you can like we can have multiple options here and that will help you to easily manage this document repository. Hope everyone clear with the uh, concept of this confluence, why we use, what is the advantage and disadvantage we have. Everyone clear on this part? Yeah, uh, I have two questions, uh, Ravi. Yes, go ahead. Uh, when I set up the account with Jira, I didn't connect uh, Confluence before. So, how can I reconnect that? Uh, that's uh, one of my question. The other one is, uh, what is the real difference between uh, JIT and Bitbucket with Confluence? I see. First of all, all for collaboration. Yeah. So first of all, Confluence is different thing. Git, Bitbucket, and Azure repository is different thing. Okay. So those three things are repository to manage our code base. Okay. Git, Bitbucket, and Azure repository. That is a repository, central repository to manage our code base. But Confluence is a central repository to manage our documents. Okay. This part you are clear? Oh, no, you mean non-code non documents? Yes. Let's say functional design document, project standards, and we have deployment guide. So many other document which we are using in the project to manage those document. That, that have includes uh, RAML? RAML, again, that is kind of code base only. But uh, if you want, you can use, but uh, that uh, demo generally like uh, we use any point platform only for to like again that MuleSoft also provide the repository that is MuleSoft any point exchange. OK, so there we manage MuleSoft resources. Ideally, we should not like uh, manage demo inside our Confluence or Jira or sorry Confluence or Git repository for if you want to manage those, then we have already any point platform. We have exchange feature, so we should manage there on exchange. Is it clear? Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, how we how we manage the number? What is the maximum of the number that we can invite uh, as a team member? There is no limitation. OK, if they have access of this, like the, you need to take license. OK, in terms of so, with bucket, uh, I see there is a limitation. I cannot add, you know, more than five persons. Maybe. Maybe it is uh, it is not uh, paid. I don't know. No, no, that is free account. I think you are talking about free account, correct? Trial account. Yeah. Yeah, for license one, there is no limit. For per person, they will charge. OK, let's say uh, okay. per person they are charging five dollars. So if you want hundred percent, you can register for hundred percent. They will charge five hundred. There is no okay. limit of. Yeah, there, if you are taking license, there is no limit and all of this product based on per person license. OK, they will charge you per person. Um, how many like uh, number you will increase? They will increase their charge. OK. Thank you so much. OK, and your first question, I think you mentioned like you have done setup of this. Uh, 
uh, Jira ticketing tool, but you missed to add Confluence there, correct? In that case, yes. you need to go to this nine dots. Okay. Uh, Here, I'm sure I didn't connect, including the JIT. Using the git, no git is like uh, anyhow. It's not related to here. If you have selected, yeah, I, I see you connected. You know, JIT and uh, Confluence no, yesterday. No, that yeah, that I given like uh, what kind of softwares I am using. So Confluence is product of Atlassian only. So they added created account together only, but Git is not Atlassian product. This is like just to. Uh, Tell them I am going to use this kind of software. OK, so only thing you need to add their confluence. If you miss to add, then what you need to do, go to this nine dot. OK, and here you will able to see confluence. You can do setup from here also. OK, it will ask you to do setup and then once you will proceed, you will able to see confluence also. In trial or, or free account of this Atlassian, you can max, you can select maximum two product. OK. OK. Thank you. Yeah, OK. So I hope uh, we are good with this. Uh, confluence also. OK, these two things, this SMS one, like SMTP protocol and Splunk setup, these two we will do together, like when we will work on this. And next, this Jenkins for CICD pipeline. These three we will do together with. Development, when we will start the development at that time, these three we will work since at this moment, uh, you will not like we don't have proper thing also to test since we don't have a mule application at this moment to test this CSD pipeline to check the log in Splunk and to send email. So like at this moment, the setup will not uh, help us to understand properly. So this we will do while working on code. Now coming to this part, Salesforce admin part. OK, so this part is very important and uh, here we will uh, I will give you some basic uh, Salesforce admin knowledge also that will help you a lot since uh, MuleSoft and Salesforce both are like uh, owned by Salesforce only. Nowadays, wherever they are using Salesforce in 80% cases, they are using MuleSoft only as an integration technology. And same uh, we have with MuleSoft. If they that company is using MuleSoft, so they are using Salesforce product. So these two are like uh, very tightly coupled with each other. So if you are working on MuleSoft, there will be huge chance that company is using Salesforce. And if you have basic knowledge of Salesforce admin, you will remove your dependency as well. Like uh, you can do something from your side also. You, you will not always look for Salesforce team. So let's see how this account setup works and what all basic things we can learn in admin part. So first, you need to do sign up. So again, similar to MuleSoft, Salesforce also provide us trial account and give us all the features. So here uh, you can create Salesforce account and that will, should, that will be valid for six months. OK, Salesforce trial account is valid for six months. In my case, I am not sure why, but uh, my account is working from last one and a half year. I'm using same account from last one and a half year. But uh, what I heard, uh, their trial account is for six months only, but yeah. Six months also good enough to learn.
मेरा बोलना आई थिंक आई वाज क्रिएटेड सर्च फॉर अकाउंट विद दिस इमेल कौन गॉट क्रिएट कैन आई शेयर योर विद दिस इमेल कैन आई शेयर योर यूजर नेम एंड पासवर्ड ओ यू ऑलरेडी क्रिएटेड अकाउंट विद दिस ओके Okay, then then uh, let me use someone else email ID. I want to show everyone like how to do setup from scratch. Okay, so what I can do? Let me use other member email ID. Okay, so Siege mentioning she cannot hear anything. Ah, uh, what about other? other other person can hear me properly yes yes sir okay, so i'm using gmail id so ravin tha so you are available i can use your email id i need, you need to uh, give me uh, verify your account from your side anyone from this three are available can you unmute yourself yes sir okay pavan okay one more thing i think we can same email id only only username we need to change okay so let me make it 1 2 using same email id you can create n number of account only thing you need to change that is user id this should be unique so let me use his email id only so we are here in salesforce page our account is ready now so here like uh, we should uh, know many thing as a like um, microsoft developer also if you have those idea then it's well and good if you don't know then you like definitely admin team will help you but uh, you will be always dependent on that and your development activity will be very slow 
Okay, so first thing, this one is our setup page. You can see here on top of you are getting this setup, and here also you can see that setup. Okay, if you will click on this, you will redirect to the same page. This is your setup page. In setup page, we have many features here. Okay, as a like Mulesoft developer, we should know about this object and fields. If you extend this one object and field, here you will see object manager, pick list value, and schema builder. I will go in object manager. And here you can see we can see all the objects what Salesforce provide by default. Okay, these are standard object of Salesforce. So when you will work, so many time you will use many time you will use standard object and many time you you need to work on custom object. Anyone has idea what is standard object in Salesforce and what is custom object? Ravi, standard objects are the one that's already created uh, by the system. Ob custom objects are the one that we created. Yes, correct. So we have two kind of object. One is standard one and one is custom one. St standard object, you can see all these are standard object. Type is standard object since these all objects are provided by Salesforce. OK. So you can start directly start using this object. If you have like need of any object like account, contact, customer, payment, so many objects are there. So simply you can start using these objects. So these all are standard object. And if you have any specific, like uh, if you have requirement of any specific object, which is not in the list of this, standard object, then you can create that particular object and that is known as custom object. How you will identify between difference between standard and custom object? So name of the standard object will be always direct name like account, activity, but name of the custom object will contain always underscore underscore C. Okay, in Salesforce, wherever you are seeing, underscore underscore C that means that is user defined one means we have developer has created something. Okay. In Salesforce, wherever you will see underscore underscore C with the any name that means that is created by user. Okay, so let me show you how to create one custom object. So here you can see create option. Custom object. And here it will ask for object name. Let's say I want to create a student. Okay. So label we can put safe. Record name. So by default, one element will be created. Okay. One field will be created in that object. So I will put name as a name. And then save. Okay, so you can see here what is the name of API name of this particular object? student underscore underscore C. OK. So whenever you will create any custom thing, it will contain this underscore underscore C. OK, now. This particular object will have many uh, elements. You can say field elements, attribute, many term, win, win term. OK, so here I will go in field and relationship. So these are, you can see, these are standard object. Okay, sorry, not a standard object, a standard field. So the, you can see in their name, there is not, no underscore underscore C. So whenever you will, no doubt, you, like no, sorry. Even if you are creating the custom object, in that custom object, there will be some standard field. 
Okay, so these are by default field which will come with your any object created by last modify by this one. When you will create, you need to provide any unique key that is name and then honor. So these four fields will come by default. Okay, now here you can see we have option of new. So click on new and you can create your own custom fields. Okay, so let me create one two field. I will give as a first name. Here we have save and save and new. If you want to create more fields, then click on save and new. If you just want to end with this, click on save. So I want to create more fields. We have multiple data type. I'm selecting text. And then I will create roll number. Roll number will be number. Or registration number. So here you can see we have many checkbox. Similar to database, we have checkbox like it will be required true or not. It will be unique or not. So it will be required also. It will be unique also. OK. So these two checkbox I selected. And uh, I think OK, let me create one more field that will be roll number. Yeah, so you can see here now we have these many fields and as I mentioned, you can see here name of this field last name. It contains underscore underscore C. Registration number contain underscore underscore C. Okay, so whatever custom field you will create that will also contain this underscore underscore C. And you can see these are standard object. It doesn't contain any underscore underscore C. One thing I want to change here, this registration number, I made it number, but I want to make it text. So here you will get edit option. OK, you can go and you can edit. So now we are good with all the fields and we are good with this object also. So we have created student object and we have this many field here. Now next thing 
so everyone clear with this object manager inside the setup we have object manager and now if you want to search for your object like what we have created either you can search here and you can scroll and you can check so we have created student so let me search student okay so here we have our object we can open and you can check the details of the student object OK, so I hope everyone clear on this setup part. We have a few more things OK for before going to that. Let's uh, take a, like 10 to 15 minute break and then we will start next of the part. OK, so today we will be more focused on this. Uh, Salesforce part only, so we'll have some basic learning, so I will show you many things like how to write SOQL query, how to check the objects, all those things I will show you. OK, fine. Let's take a 15 minute break and then let's join again. Ravi. Yes, go ahead. Before that, can I have a question on Confluence, please? Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, you said that in Confluence, we can see who made what change, right? Yes. yes yeah, yes. so that means Confluence can keep log files. Is that logs or? OK, how they internally manage, uh, definitely there should be log file only. Means, uh, they they are tracking all the users and what change they are doing. So definitely there should be some internal setting. Log file. OK, thank you. So here you can see now like uh, I updated this here also. You can see I visited 15 minutes ago. So all those kind of detail you will get even if you want on some particular. Page like uh, whatever folder we have based on that also you will get tracking. Okay, so you can see created by this and 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 you will get more details. Here only you will get page history. Actually, uh, he did only selected folder. He hasn't done any change, so his name is not coming. Otherwise, his detail will also come. Can, can, okay. we cr can we create a report from Confluence? Uh, what report you want to generate? Like log, log, log reports like that. I mean, what, See, what, what, uh, what type of change has been made for the last maybe week or something like that, if we need to. So I'm not sure that like uh, this particular tool is good for reporting purpose or not, but if you like want to generate report and all then you can integrate with power bi and some other reporting tool and you can do oh thank you okay fine then so can let's you, have can you, can you use a uh, post postman as a collaboration platform uh postman for what which collaboration you mean to say I see there is also a collaboration uh, uh, in that platform too. Yeah, so see, in again, Postman, like we use for testing our API, correct? Now, there yes. will be multiple team member. They are testing similar kind of API. So in Postman, if you are taking license of the Postman, okay, then uh, you can share the curl with each other directly through Postman. Okay, otherwise, uh, uh, what practice we are following at this actually in my organization also, we are using Postman. The but thing is, whenever we want to share the curl with each other, we have to export it and we need to share it. So that is, uh, well, you can say, pain area since many people are working on different different API and he is the like you can say main developer of that API. You know, like uh, he developed most of the functionality. So he is handy with all the postman, but other team member is not handy. So if we want to test anything, we need to reach him and we need to request him. OK, give me postman for this. To avoid that kind of scenario, you can take a license version and you can like create one uh, shared account. Whatever change uh, people will do there, it will be shared across the all the team member. Yeah, see the my 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 confusion is uh, uh, is this the company 
uh, that, that that's going to determine what types of software we should use or we as experts we decide on that so i see there are different you know uh possibilities in this case yes, so I, I, yeah i should know you know what 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 are what are the the basic requirements to decide i mean it might be based on you know the uh, the popularity or as i said is this a company that's going to determine for us yeah so again it depends on many factor okay few places client will decide okay you have to use this tool and software okay they like in in client side they used to have one expert and his responsibility is to decide all this thing and to like decide approve everything okay not only on the software side on the development side everything he used to review all those things he used to instruct everything there will be few client they will just pay you money and they will let you do whatever way you want to do okay in that case based on your expertise you need to decide what tool technology and software you will use okay okay so th that's fine so how, how, how can i decide that's that yes, so uh, for that, thing that we yeah, should for, learn so yes, is this the confluence or the jira or the postman especially the collaboration part because we can find it in the bucket uh okay so that, that's uh, let me give you one example. Let's let's say you must need one central repository, correct? Where you can uh, like manage your uh, code base and all, correct? Now you have three, four options. You have Git also, you have Bitbucket, you have Azure repository. Okay, both uh, like all three have different pricing and all three are from different vendor. If you are already using this Azure uh, ticketing tool, okay. Uh -huh. So to add new feature, Azure repository will not cost you a lot, or it might be that that part of one package only. In that case, definitely you should go with Azure repository. But if you are using this, uh, like, uh, uh, sorry, data ticketing tool, okay. In that case, if you want repository, then you are completely independent which repository you want. If you will take Azure repository, then maybe if they are offering all the package, then unnecessarily you are taking other things which you don't need. And you, if you have to pay more amount, then definitely you will think about Git and Bitbucket. Okay. So here, like first of all, you should have expertise on all this tool. You should know how this tool works okay it's not like uh, you will do study at that time whenever you, someone is deciding tool and technology then that person should be expert and he should know in market what all possible options are there generally this thing should be done by architect or some senior team member so they know what all possible options we have what all advantage disadvantage we have what all compatibility we have with the existing infrastructure based on that he used to take decision. Is it clear? Got it. Thank you. OK, fine. So let's connect in 15 minutes then. Let me start timer.
Yeah, hello everyone. If you are back, please reply with yes. What about others? Okay, so, so far we have seen this object and field manager. Okay, now we will see other option also. So here you can see, once you will click on this, we have one option setting. Okay, so I will open this setting option. And You can see here reset my security token inside the setting. You will get here reset my security token. So here you can click on this reset token and then once uh, one token will be sent to your email ID. This token we will use while connecting our MuleSoft application with Salesforce. Okay, so we have multiple way of connection. First, we have using basic authentication. At that time, we will use this one. If you are using other connection, then you need to connect with Salesforce team and they will provide you all the detail. But for basic authentication, you can generate token and you can connect with Salesforce. Okay, so that option you will get inside the setting and then once you will go to reset my security token so that thing you need to keep in mind second option like third thing we have in this particular tab only here you can see your name okay on top of your name if you will click then it will it will take you in another tab and here you can see like all the objects are available here okay whatever object you you have there all the all those objects are here here we are unable to see our object what we have created okay even that in in the list that object is not here so how you can get that object in this particular list okay so for that Here. Type tabs in setup, OK? And then you can see here tabs options are there. Open this option. And here you will get a menu option. Custom other tab, click on new.
you can see in this object we are getting our object what we have created we created a stone a student so we you can see here then you can select any any style for this okay and then click on next next okay so just now i created this student time now go to this page and refresh this page Now in this drop down, you can see this student one. Previously, we were unable to see our uh, like custom object in this tab. Now it's coming here. Student one is coming here. Here we have one option to change this sequence also. Let me quickly check where that option we have. OK, this only. So you can see first one is home, then opportunity, then leads. If you want to put your tab on top after home, if you want to put your tab like that uh, particular student object, just drag it and drop it on second position and click on save. So now you can see student are coming at second position. So you can maintain the order also. Okay, based on your use, like uh, which objects you are using very frequently, you can change their orders. Okay. Now I will go inside student and this is our custom object what we have created. So here you can see we have new option. So you can create. You can enter data manually. This is the manual process. Later on we will do all the integration with MuleSoft. Everything will be done by MuleSoft, but at this moment. We haven't integrated yet, so we are doing some manual work. So I created one record and here you can see all this data. Developer guide created by last modified by name and other field we can see here. I want to. I want to create one more. So this one also got created. So in this object, like you will be able to see all this student one, student two, everything is visible here. But you can see we are able to see only limited data. If you want to see all the data here, okay, first select that all and then go with the go to this setup option. Here you can see select list filter. Select field, sorry, select field to display. Go to this option. At this moment, only name is there, but I want first name. Last name. Registration number, roll number. I want this many data and maybe last modified by. Last modified date, these two ones. Yes. So now you can see all this data in here. Okay, so this way and here, if you want to see any recent data, if you want to see all the data based on that, you need to select all means it will select all. Everyone clear on this part? So all this thing where we will get, you need to click on your name. And then you will go to this page. Then you need to go to that particular object. And then you will be able to see all this field. Hope everyone clear on this part. OK. 
Okay, so we are good on this part. Now, like last thing we need to know in this Salesforce part, okay, that is this developer console. Okay. Used to come in different tab, but I want in same. So this one is last and important thing which you should know. So here you can write Salesforce query, SOQL query, and you can check the data. Okay. So I will go to query editor and here I will write the query. Select. First name. Last name. Okay. Everything will continue. Train underscore underscore C. Select first name, last name, email. Email was there or not? No, email was not there. Role. Form. Student. So we are getting all this data. So here you can write SOQL query also. So similar kind of query we need to write when we are doing any operation from Salesforce connector. Okay, if you want to do select query, so similar kind of query we need to write. So SOQL, SOQL query is very similar to sales, uh, this SQL query only. Only small changes are there that we will learn while doing the development. Anyone has any doubt on this part? Okay, so in that case, we are good with Salesforce part also. Other setup like SMS, Splunk, and Jenkins one. This we need to do while doing our code only, since things are not here to test the, all these. Then I think uh, we are all good on this part. So we have time. So what we can do? Let's start with the functional design document discussion. Ravi. Yes. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna see more ab about uh, Salesforce, or we done with okay. this. Only, yeah. So as a MuleSoft developer, this much knowledge will be good enough. Okay. But uh, when we will start development, then we will see connectivity and all. That thing we will see. Okay, okay. Yeah, I will not take in detail of like Salesforce, otherwise our like topic will change. So here our objective is to learn MuleSoft with the basic knowledge of other tool and technology what you what we use as a MuleSoft developer. Okay, whatever other tool technology I cover. So those are all tool technology you should know, but you should know on like basic or intermediate level that should be good enough. If anyone want to have more detailed knowledge, then yeah, definitely you can explore the internet and you can get more study on this either Git or Jira ticketing tool. Many things are there, so you can do more study. But I just given you a heads up how this tool technology works. Okay, and once you will start working on project, you will have some idea. Okay. We, we have used this in this way. Okay, fine. Uh, so now let's start on this uh, functional design document uh, discussion. So how this functional design document works. This will be part of requirement gathering. Okay. 
or maybe uh, better I can explain you use case what we are going to cover. That will be more better. Then we will go with functional DI and document. Hello, hello, 